Hi, this is Mrs. Austin. We're here in the Pre-Calculus Statistics Unit, Video 1, which discusses the research cycle and vocabulary of research. By the time you finish this, you should know the five steps of the research cycle and some vocabulary related to research that involves statistics. First up is the research cycle. You can see that the research cycle has five parts. We question, we design a study to answer the question, collect data that we hope will answer the question, analyze that data, prepare a report, and then we can begin that cycle all over again. It's important to note that the research cycle is endless. An answer to one question just generates another, or maybe a revision of our original question. And we could also add extra arrows to this. Perhaps as we're analyzing data, we realize that more data needs to be collected. Or we may realize during the report that we need to go back and collect additional data. At any phase, you can return. So it really is an iterative process rather than one that proceeds in this circular pattern, fixed and unchanging. Now there's a number of different types of studies that we can design. Two of the most important are the observational study and the experimental study. In the observational study, we observe, but we do not make any changes in the environment. In this type of study, perhaps you're interviewing people, perhaps you are sending out a survey, perhaps you are just looking at data that has already been collected, but you're not making any changes. In an experimental study, we make a change. This is called a treatment, and then we make observations around it. So the parts of an experimental study are the treatment, the treatment group, and the control group. The treatment is the condition that we will change. There are many different examples of this. You could change a medication that people are receiving. You could change the way that a course is being taught or the way that a certain topic is taught. You could even look at an experiment in which people change their clothing or their hairstyle to see how that affects how others respond to them. The group who does make this adjustment or who has the adjustment made is called the treatment group. The control group is a group that does not receive the treatment. So if we wanted to test if a new medication was effective, we would give that new medication to the treatment group and we would give a sugar pill or placebo to the control group. For both types of study, we investigate one or more variables of interest. Variables of interest could be what income people have, they could be what blood pressure people have, they could be how many times a day people eat. But these things all can change and so they are called variables. We are interested in them and that's why they're called variables of interest. Now, research questions absolutely must be generated before you decide if you are going to do an observational study or an experiment. Research questions by the way that they are stated and by the type of question you're seeking to answer will drive the rest of how you design your experiment or your observational study. And it's one that we want to answer through using the data we have gathered. It is stated formally, for example, does every bag of Doritos contain an average of six ounces of chips? Now, we will, after stating this research question, generally make a hypothesis. In some types of research, we may go in without a hypothesis, but those types of research we will not be studying extensively in this course. So for our purposes, you will make a hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference between the true value and the claimed value, or that no change has occurred. For example, in our Doritos question, we would say each bag contains six ounces of chips on average. The alternative hypothesis is that there is some type of difference between the true value and the claimed value. 
An example of an alternative hypothesis is that each bag of Doritos does not contain six ounces of chips on average. You'll notice that the null hypothesis is like a sentence, a statement form of the research question. It's saying we're getting exactly what we expected. The alternative hypothesis in this case says just does not. Sometimes an alternative hypothesis may say it contains more or it contains less. So I could state an alternative hypothesis that each bag of Doritos contains less than six ounces of chips on average. Again, the way you make these statements will drive how you analyze your data. We can gather lots and lots of different types of data, and we'll discuss more about the different types of data in another video. The two types that you should know about right now are primary data and secondary data. Primary data is gathered directly through observation, through surveys or interviews, or through experiments. It is data that you see as the researcher. It is data that you personally have gathered. Sometimes we cannot obtain primary data, and secondary data becomes extremely useful. Secondary data can be gathered from an online source, like U.S. Census records, or um, state school records. It can be gathered from books or magazines and different reference material, or it can be gathered from historical documents. The important distinction is that secondary data was not gathered by you, the researcher. It was gathered by somebody else. Oftentimes when we run a study, we want to be sure that when we run that big study, everything runs smoothly. So we'll have kind of a dress rehearsal. This is a pilot study. And a pilot study is a smaller study that is done first to make sure the larger scale study will run smoothly. You've probably already encountered pilot studies if you've taken tests like the MCAS or the SATs. You may have discussed questions with somebody else who said, boy, I didn't see a question like that, or I didn't have that type of section on my SAT test. These are pilot questions. They want to find out more about them and whether it's good to have these in the large scale test, so they test them out on a small group of people first so that they can gather more information. Being ethical is extremely important in research, and ethics is a code of moral and scientific standards. In research, it addresses how we deal with our subjects, especially when they are humans or animals. If you're doing research on Doritos, there may not be a lot to be concerned about how those Doritos are being treated. But if you're working with humans or animals, you want to be sure that those subjects are being treated fairly, that they are not being left out of studies, that studies are not going to harm them, and that if a study shows that a certain treatment is harmful, that it is stopped at once. Most universities and research centers have special groups that are called institutional review boards. When a researcher wants to do research, they have to submit paperwork to the institutional review board who then decides whether the research is ethical, whether the researcher has taken all of the appropriate safeguards to make sure that people's anonymity is respected, that their humanity is respected, and they provide feedback to the researcher. These IRB groups often also require that research be reviewed and updated on a regular basis in case ethical standards have changed or new findings have come out of the research. The most important thing that you can remember in doing research is first, do no harm. This concludes our introduction to statistics. I hope that you've learned something interesting and that you're ready to tackle handouts one and two from the statistics unit.